Good evening and welcome to Who Done It. Now here we are on a boiling hot August day and someone's frozen to death. And as I haven't seen anybody yet apart from the victim, it's very unlikely that you've already guessed who done it. Now in the studio we have a panel who will later have a chance to cross-examine the suspects. Uh, this week our guests are a lady whom I've arranged very cunningly to sit next to me, Julie Edge. <laughs> and one of the most unlikely lads to sit next to her, Rodney Bewes. <laughs> Immaculately dressed as always, Rodney. And our <laughs> residence, a lady who is a great cook herself, Anushka Hempel. <laughs> and Patrick, you want a piece of toast, he can make it moa. As usual, we've got four members of our studio audience who will try and get the answers quicker than the panel. Here they are. <laughs> right now, back to the Hotel United Nations. And I'm sure you won't forget, the guilty person will probably lie. But this week, we have a slight difference in that as an international assassination attempt is suspected, MI5 are actually making inquiries as opposed to Scotland Yard. Not now. Commander. I'm getting very tired of this. We've been here for nearly two hours. Unless you charge someone, I'm going home. Oh, I'm telephoning my... I'm telephoning the embassy. My name is not Count Igor Bransky for nothing. I may be a chef these days, but I still have a little influence. Well, I'm waiting for a file to be delivered, and when it is, I'll have the murderer. Aha! Commander. Thank you, Sergeant Birch. Let me show you all some snaps we have in our files. Now, here is one of the President Ozdrovnia taken on an official visit to the United States. Thank you. In 1973, this is the same President who's coming here today, and the same President whom I have been told is to be assassinated somehow in this hotel. Now, now it may be that poison is planned, and what easier way to do that than from the kitchen? I suggest that one of you try to involve Ravel in this attempted assassination, and when he wouldn't cooperate, he was murdered. Do I make myself clear? Now look again at this picture taken in the United States, and look especially at the man behind the president. Now look at this photograph taken last year on a presidential visit to the People's Republic of China, and see again who is very close to the president. Need I say any more? Laszlo Bretz, I arrest you for the murder of the head chef, Monsieur Ravel, and I warn you that anything you say will be taken down and used No, to don't, uh, don't bother. Commander, we'll just look at this, please. CIA? Well, that's ridiculous. Why wasn't I told? Well, I, I don't know, but I, I do know that you blow on my cover, but that, that doesn't matter now because I've got the murder in my hands now. Monsieur Bargo, you say you are a chef. I was in this kitchen early this morning, and I saw you messing around behind the paprika jar. Now, just what exactly were you doing there? Monsieur Bargo, I charge you with the murder. Yes, yes, monsieur, please. Don't go on. Security Francais Special. French Special, please. Yes, monsieur. I was photographing potential evidence mm. against you, and now you have, as you say, blown my cover. Gentlemen, mm. please, please. Now you've finished arresting each other, may we go? I still have a hotel to run, Miss Brent. I'm sure you realize that the president is due here in a few hours. Well, all the more reason why we should arrest this person now. Ravel must have switched on the alarm light because it was deliberately smashed. Now, fortunately, that current was connected to the clock, which stopped when the door was shut and he was locked in, which was approximately 
11.30. Now, is that right, Commander? Yes, it is right, yeah. Okay. But this is my investigation, and I'll do the talking. Well, you've got absolutely no jurisdiction over me because my authorization came from the top to run this case. This is London, England, not Chicago. Uh, Paldo, Paldo, gentlemen, uh, my authority to investigate this case comes from the office of the president himself. Now, I have, what you say, a free hands here. I shall put a call through straight away and get this ridiculous situation resolved at once. Uh, uh. Count Igor, how long have you been a chef? For over 40 years, I have cooked for the greatest coronets in Europe. And you are, I suppose, uh, acquainted with the method of preparing a souffle Saint Helena? Monsieur, you insult me. I have done this before you left school, or they left the bank of the river, or wherever they dragged you from. Yes, monsieur, but just relax and answer my question. What type of brandy is used? Type of brandy? What type of brandy? Are you mad? Only the finest Napoleon brandy. Ah, yes. But I believe the original recipe stipulated only the 1808 vintage. Is that not correct? Oh, uh, that is so. Uh-huh. Uh, Count, where were you last night at 11.30? At 11.30, I was preparing a special chicken Kiev in the mezzanine kitchen upstairs. Mm -hmm. That Frenchman was in my company. And suddenly, I realized that I had run out of paprika. So I put the oven onto a slow heat, and I came down into this kitchen. Paprika. I have found the paprika. I was away for not more than five minutes. I remember the timer ringing on the cooker. The chicken was ready. Uh, Count, I have to tell you that last week I had a run done of some of your prints I bought off a of glass you were using. Now, I got some news for you. Well, what is the news? Count Igor Bronsky, born 1925, London, Bethnal Green. Real name, Stanley Brown. Well, nobody is perfect. Can you imagine a chef of world renown by the name of Stanley? I ask you, could you eat a... Boeuf bourguignon a la brown. No, I merely added a touch of uh, color to the food and, of course, my accent. Stanley, what else you see in the hotel last night? Nothing, and please don't call me Stanley. Come to think of it, I did find it very strange that Ravel left two raw onions chopped up and exposed on the board. Mm-hmm. And why was that strange? Well, onion dries very quickly. He would not have left it anywhere like that. Good. Senor Benito, why were you not in the kitchen with Rebel last night? It's because you sent me off early. You see, Rebel, like oh, all other chefs, uh, has a secret which he will guard with his life. Unfortunately, Monsieur Rebel doesn't have that problem any longer. Benito, where were you at 11.30 last night? At the lamp, I was in this hotel. It's at about, well, 11.15, uh, Helen, Miss Brent and I, we met, and uh, we had a drink, and then we dined. It's upstairs in the restaurant. See, we are allowed to go there after the regular customers have left. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Benita. I just had a phone call from my mother. She's very ill. I'm going to have to go and see her tomorrow. I'm sorry. I'm a little upset. Oh, I'm very sorry. And I hope she will be better soon. Huh? <laughs> hey, I've uh, ordered the steak tartare for you. Is that all right? Oh, yes, that's fine. 
Oh, no, wait a minute. Isn't that with um, raw egg and... That's right, and the onions and the peppers. And the... <laughs> I'm allergic to onion and pepper. I'm uh, so sorry. Can you change it? It does not matter. I will order something special for you. A beans on toast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what I like. <laughs> uh, Leslo. Senor. What would you like? Um, a medium entrecot, please. Will you phone down to the mezzanine, uh, please, and... Uh, change Miss Brent's order. Sure. And what time did you finish? Oh, I, uh, I left. We finished eating at about 12.15, and then we said good night. Yeah, I can uh, confirm that. This, uh, <laughs> look at here, uh, cigarette butt. Now, that's a funny thing to find in a well-run kitchen. Mr. Brooks, do you smoke? No, only cigars. Monsieur? No. Miss Brent? No, oh, I don't smoke. As a <laughs> manager of this hotel, I should like to know what guarantee I have that one of you chaps didn't do it. Hmm? I suggest, in fact, that one of you two is a double agent. <laughs> Welcome back to Who Done It, where we're trying to work out who put the chef in the icebox. Now, MI5 are doing their best to unravel what appears to be a network of international cooking spies. So before we continue with the action, let me recap the story so far. The MI5 suspect Ravel's murder is tied up with a possible assassination attempt on the president of Nozdrovnia. Number one suspect, the head waiter, turns out to be a CIA agent. Number two suspect, French chef Bargo, turns out to be a French security. Number three suspect, head chef Count Igor Bronsky, turns out to be just plain Stanley Brown from Bethnal Green. The station chef Benito claims that he was dining with Helen Brent, the hotel receptionist, who was off duty at the time. Mr. Brooks, the hotel manager, is alarmed at all the fuss and openly wonders about the possibility of a double agent. At the moment, he is explaining... Mr. Brooks, do you have any idea why a man becomes a double agent? Why? Well, the faintest idea. That's quite simple, really. Money, a lot of money. If a double agent could pull off a job like killing this president, he'd be fixed for the rest of his life, say, a hundred thousand pounds. What do you think of that, Count? Well, perhaps one of you two accepted the contract. Ah, uh, don't be silly, Stanley. Now, Mr. Brooks, a man could retire on that sort of money, couldn't he? Of course, you've already retired once. I don't know what you're talking about. No? Well, you just think back to 1965, the British Embassy in Nostrovia. Mr. Clarence Brooks, chief aide, the British ambassador, is asked to leave the country by the government of Nostrovia. Now, Mr. Brooks, your expulsion from Nostrovia had to do with gambling debts, didn't it? Absolute piffle and rubbish. It was those rumors that finished my career in the diplomatic service. Yeah. They were all lies. Were they lies spread by a certain press attaché? The same attaché who is now the president of Nostrovia? I won't deny that I wouldn't burst into tears if the president died tomorrow. But certainly not in my hotel. Anyway, I was nowhere near the kitchen last night. I had troubles enough as it was. Yeah. What? What, all the telephones for another hour? That'll be midnight. All outside line, that's ridiculous. I don't give a damn about their security check. They've got absolutely no right to do that. Yes, yeah, all right. I'll deal with it. And then I got in the lift, went to my room, turned in for the night. I must tell you that I saw you get in the lift last night just after 11. Now, where is your room? It's on the top floor. Mr. Brooks, please. Now, look, after you got in the lift, I stood and watched the lift floor indicator. It went down, not up. The kitchen is in the basement. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I forgot. I did, in fact, pop into my office, which is on this floor, before I went up to my room. Uh. Gentlemen, I must ask you to check with your offices. You will find that this case is entirely mine. Carry on, Sergeant Birch. Mm. Uh, Commander, uh, I understand that you now have this case in your pocket, but may I be permitted to ask just one question? 
Oh, very well. <clears throat> Monsieur Stan, I beg your pardon, I should say Count Igor. You say that you started to cook uh, chicken Kiev at 11.30 last night. You found you had run out of paprika, so you set it to a slow oven, and you came down here, found the paprika, and went back. After just five minutes, the chicken was cooked. Now, that's very quick, isn't it? It was a quick chicken. I had already pre-cooked it, a technique I'm not very proud of, but you must understand that I was cooking that night for some Americans. Uh, je comprends, yes, but uh, surely the, uh, the paprika was just a little bit Excuse late. Excuse sir, you uh, said one, uh, one question. I really don't have any more time. Uh, Brett, one of my mm. men on duty in the hotel last night saw Mr. Brooks go up in the lift at 20 minutes past 11. Now, you mm. say you saw Brooks go into the lift at uh, a little after 11. Now, how do we know that you went straight into the dining room and not from the kitchen? Because at that time, Miss Brent just dropped her handbag. Let me help I you. helped her pick up the contents and then went straight into the dining room. Later. There you are. Thank you. Miss Brent, is that true? Yes, that is what happened. I can't remember exactly what fell out of the handbag, but is it important? Sergeant, I don't remember you carrying in a stretcher. We didn't. He doesn't need one. Oh. I reckon he was trying to tell you something before he died. Why do you say that? Well, I found an ice block beside him. He's tried to scratch something on it. Tried to scratch something. Huh? Scratch something. He scratched something. Something was scratched on it. Well, let's all get back to work. <clears throat> what did he scratch? It's the initial B for Bronsky or Brooks. Bargo. Oh, Brett's. Brent. Oh, Benito. You know who it is, uh, Commander. Blade. Blade? <laughs> I hear a humdinger for you. And perhaps even be for Rodney Bewes. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> First, let us welcome our B suspects. Uh... Right, panel, is there any part of that international cooking lesson that you'd like played back? Uh, Julie, what would you like to see again? I would like to see the part where she loses her handbag. Who, who loses her handbag? Uh, Miss <coughs> Helen Brent. Right, Rodney. I should like to see the bits where the police inspector, Lieutenant Commander Blade, holds up the photographs. They're still black and white photographs. Right, Anushka. I'd like to see the bit where Monsieur Burgo has been taking the photographs of that list and picks up a paprika bottle and takes it out into the other bit of the kitchen. He picks up the paprika bottle. That's an interesting pronunciation. No. The pa -pa -pa. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bloodhound, what about you? I'd like to see the bit where Burgio Benito, the Latin lover, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> is, uh, is, uh, is the man with impeccable taste in women, if I may say so, is waiting for uh, the young lady to come. She's very upset when they're in the restaurant. Right. The Good. Well, while we're collecting those together, Julie, would you like to start off by asking a pertinent question? <laughs> yes, I will indeed. I will ask Mr. Benito a question. You worked in the hotels in a, a long time? Just a three years. Just two years. Mm. Would you say that Lazzo Brenz is a good waiter? I don't know. I, would, I haven't had much experience of him as a waiter. We just know each other because we're on the staff. I don't know if he was a good or not. I thought he was a waiter. Mm -hmm. 
What would you say if, if I suggested that you cancelling the tata steak was a message sent down to the kitchen? Uh, you might say it, but it's not the truth. Mm. 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 Remember, he can be lying. Yes, I, yes. I am. Yes. Rodney. <laughs> I think he was, wasn't he? Yes, yeah. <laughs> of course he was. He was less convincing than me. <laughs> On my T-shirt. Less convincing than your T-shirt, yes. Yeah. Yes, now, question. Nice down here it did, it did, it did. <laughs> I can't afford a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> a question, please. A question. I knew you were going to say that. I should like to ask our American friend from the CIA, Mr. Laszlo Brest. Uh, Brenst. <laughs> Brest. <laughs> um... Would there be anything to be gained? Um, what's, what's the CIA's involvement in this country where the uh, Premier is coming for the visit? What's it called? Bratislava? Or? Lastrovia. Lastrovia. Well, it's what, very simple. What is the involvement with the CIA in Lastrovia? It's very simple. We were, uh, I was doing a job of work in Paris, mm -hmm. and I received notification, notification from Washington, D.C. to uh, go to London because the President was coming over. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had uh, a lot of financial dealings with Lastrovia, and uh, because of the East-West situation, we thought it was just as well to keep an eye on it. Would the CIA gain anything if the president was to be assassinated? I'd rather not go into that. It was a leading question. <laughs> it's a leading answer. <laughs> Thank you. Anushka. I'd like to ask the leading lady how long she's been working in the hotel as six a receptionist. Months. I've been working in this hotel for six months. Mm -hmm. And where were you before then? I was a conference secretary. I used to travel Europe for a large concern. Yes. What was the name of the concern? I. I'm not allowed to say that. Thank you very much. Patrick? Yes. Well, first of all, I'd like to say what a rotten lot of policemen there are. You've got the MI5, the SFS and the CIA running around and nobody knows, nobody suspects anybody else until there's a murder. It's never like that in Special Branch. But, um, <laughs> now, um, je voudrais demander à Monsieur Bago. Uh, pas en français, Monsieur Slasher. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on, on anglais, it would be otherwise we have to put up subtitles. On <laughs> anglais. <laughs> Plain English. Uh, may I ask then, in reverse, I'd like to ask Monsieur Bargot, uh, would you say to, for me, um, uh, you are very charming this evening in French? Vous avez l'air très ravissante ce soir. Oh, uh, what, very What did he say, John? Yes, yes, it was absolutely perfect. Very good. Yes, very well, that was nice. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I was speaking to the lady on your right, you understand? <laughs> Can I ask Mr. Bargo, Monsieur Bargo, uh, could you just clear something up for me? You're in the SFS. What, I'm a bit perplexed. What is, would, was there to be gained by, uh, Miss, uh, by Ravel being killed? There I must stop you. Oh. You can't answer oh. because I'm ready for the first playback. The little light should have flashed, but it didn't. But I've now got the high sign, ready for the first playback, which is Rodney's. Rodney, uh, you want to see uh, one of the photos that MI5 had? It's very quick, so watch very carefully. Now look again at this picture taken in the United States and look especially at the man behind the president. Now look at this photograph taken last year on a presidential visit to the People's Republic of China and see again who is very close to the president. Need I say? Yes, Rodney, mm. did that help you? Very interesting, yes. Well, mm. say something. Well, uh, I could, can I ask uh, Mr. Brest, Brenst a question? Brett. Mr. BB? Brett. I'll call you Laszlo. May I call you Laszlo? Please. The person standing in front of you in the first um, picture, was that Henry Kissinger? It was indeed. What's he like? Very charming man. If I get out of this studio in time, I'm going to head over to the Middle East to meet him. <laughs> Thank you. That's my question. Right. Yeah, Patrick, we'll let it continue with that question. Finish with uh, Mr. Bargo. What, what was, if there's going, someone's going to be assassinated, uh, surely it, we all suspect that Ravel was going to be the assassin, but then somebody else must be in the plot to have killed him. Can you explain why should he be killed? Well, it's a question I don't really understand. I had no idea why he should be killed. As far as I was concerned, the man was uh, head chef in this hotel. But, I mean, you think that, do, I've been asking you as a policeman, would you suspect that he was involved in some way with the Nazdrovia team? It scene? seems obvious to me. It would be a very great coincidence if, for instance, this was a crime passionnel at the same time as the president was coming. Yes, I, thank you very much. I'm going to stop you again because we're ready for the next playback. The next playback is Anushka's. Uh, you wanted to see when the French chef Bargo was caught taking photos behind the paprika jar. Here it is. And I saw you messing around behind the paprika jar. Now, just what exactly were you doing there? Yes. 
Yes, mm, yes. Mm. Well, what was on that list? I mean, was it a list of names? Did there were some documents which I had found the evening before when I thought the kitchen was empty. And I came down especially to photograph them because they had no reason to be in there. This tiern, which is not used because it is faulty, it's not operating, I just happened to open the lid and I saw these documents which were plans of a hotel floor uh, with room numbers and a list of names. I see. And I couldn't remove them, but I photographed them. I see. Were, were they the room, the, um, the room numbers and all the people who were going to stay there? Sort of they were the rooms of working. the president's suite and the rooms either side. Thank Merci, you very Monsieur much. le Chef. We are now ready for number three playback, which is Patrick's. The part you asked for was when Benito was dining in the restaurant and Miss Brent joined him. Yes. I'm very sorry. And I hope she will be better soon. Huh? Hey, I have... Uh, Ordered the steak tata for you. Is that all right? Oh, yes, that's fine. Oh, no, wait a minute. Isn't that with um, raw egg and. That's all right, and the onions and the peppers. <laughs> I'm allergic to onion and pepper. Uh, I'm so sorry. Can you change it? It does not matter. I will order something special for you. Yes, Bloodhound. Isn't she nice? Oh, incidentally, I must interrupt you here because I've got a little letter here saying that I wish that I would stop hounding Patrick Moore. He does not deserve the title of Bloodhound as he's not got large floppy ears and sad drooping eyes. <laughs> oh! I've got a new name for you. What have you got to say uh, about that? Yeah, can I ask Bergio, um, firstly, when Ravel said to you in the, uh, right at the beginning of the play that you, should, you could leave and go early, what time was that? That was uh, 10 o'clock in the... Ten o'clock. Yes. And yet Ravel was still chopping up onions then. He just had a, a sauce for this special meal that he wanted to make. Yeah. It doesn't have to take that long, so I suppose that between at 10 o'clock and uh, 11 or 30, yeah. he was working. Can I ask you sauce. how long... Uh, no, I'm stopped oh. again. Sorry, Patrick. Uh, ready for the last playback, which is Julie's. Uh, you asked for the moment when Miss Brent drops her handbag on the floor and Brett's saw the contents. Mm. Here it is. Let me help I you. helped her pick up the contents and then went straight into the dining room. There you are. Thank you. <gasps> That's yes, we all saw that. <laughs> she yes. said she didn't smoke. And why did you carry cigarettes and lighters and when you don't smoke? Well, actually, I do smoke, but Benito doesn't like me to smoke, so I said I didn't. But that cigarette butt that was found couldn't have been mine because I wear quite a lot of lipstick. There was no lipstick on the cigarette butt. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Any other questions you'd like to ask? Julie? Me? Yes, you yes, have yes, yes. I would like to ask the Count, uh, um, I hope I pronounced it right, the question. Impeccably. Yes. You talked about uh, the St. Helena souffle you are making. Is that your private recipe? A very private, yes. My parents took me to Nostravia at the time when Nostravia was part of Moldavia. And uh, there <laughs> I met a very attractive girl from the Balkans, and I fell very much in love with her. Her name was Helena. <laughs> that is very sus suspicious, I think. Yes, it's also if I'd like to point out to you, sir, that the name of your country is Nostrovnia. Absolutely. Strange. Oh, that depends which uh, dialect <laughs> you speak. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'd, I'd like to ask Igor another question mm. about his cooking. Igor. Igor. Eagle, forgive Stan. me. Stan. Stan. Ooh. Stan. Uh, Eagle, please. Right, Eagle. Um, you said that you were cooking a chicken Kiev upstairs. Yes. Well, why on earth did you go downstairs and get the paprika bottle? Because you don't put paprika in Kiev, as far as I know. Is it left over from your Bethnal Green days? Not Bethnal Green. We always go back to Nostravia because Nostromia. my. Oh, you're mixing me up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nostravia. My mother is Nostravian. Moldavian, and she did not like garlic. We, in our family, preferred to use paprika. Mm. Thank you. Yes, uh, Patrick. Can I just ask um, um, uh, the Clarence Brooks, the manager, a question? When uh, the alarm was broken and the, the clock stopped above the thing, 11.30, would all the clocks in the, in the hotel or restaurant stop? No, that particular clock is on a separate circuit because it's attached to the refrigerator. When these uh, various agents who seem to be working for you applied, say, say uh, uh, the, the Frenchman, uh, Monsieur Bargo, 
uh, turned up. Did he, did he have very good references? Well, in fact, the assistant manager engages temporary staff, which they would be uh, regarded as. And he was temporary staff, wasn't mm. he? Yeah. Could I just quickly yeah, ask... Well, no, I think I'd, oh, I'd like to ask sorry, you, yes. Rodney, you hadn't had much of a chance to ask... Question. No, I'd like to ask um, Mr Brooks a question, actually. When you left this country, Nostravir, 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 when you're leaving this country, um, why was it you had to leave under a cloud from the diplomatic, from the embassy? Uh, well, I was accused of gambling. Gambling? Yes. What's the main sort of source of gambling in Nostravir? Camels. Pardon? <laughs> camels. They camels? Can, yes, camels. You bet on camel races. Camel races. You had a, in other words, you had a double on a dromedary. <laughs> I am afraid. Please, please, please. There, there please. we must stop. Don't get behind. Because uh, we must stop there, otherwise this lot will never have time to get the dinner ready. A panel, I'd like you now to write down who done it and any clues that you may have spotted. Uh, you may have spotted them on the menus in front of you, perhaps. And of course, this applies to our audience panel as well. Let's see if you can do better than the so called experts. Right, let's see how our panel are getting on. Julie. Yes. Kiss. Love and kisses from Julie. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, son. Yes. You think it's right, wilted son. a bit? <laughs> Anushka. Take a half a spoonful of sugar, a tablespoon. What's that? A recipe. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got? <coughs> oh, yes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll see about that. Good. <laughs> so, let's see. As usual, we'll deal with the audience panel first and we'll see if we've got a winner. Yes, a half right. Another half right. And a right. Two clues. And a right. Right, 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 right. Absolutely brilliant. Yes, oh. we've got the best, best collection of clues we've ever had in the game from the audience panel. Uh, Mrs. Doris Perks from Martin near Blackpool. Many congratulations. Well <laughs> and Mrs. Martin, you will be presented with this magnificent Who Done It trophy with our love and affection and congratulations. I'll give it to you later. Good. Right then. Mm. You lot. <laughs> Julie, yes. who done it? And briefly, why? Well, I think it's Helen Brandt. Well, first of all, because I, I saw her in the photograph with the president, so she must have been involved. So that's one clue. She was lying about the cigarettes, and she was not allergic to onions because she was in the kitchen afterwards when they, she was interviewed by all the policemen and there was all kinds of onions lying there and she didn't have any tears coming or anything like that. And also... You're saying mm, she was allergic or wasn't allergic? I don't think she is much. She was probably crying because it just killed She's someone. Generally I upset think. she just murdered yes. a few people. Yes. Yeah. Right, Rodney. Yes, I think it's Helen Brent. Yes. Um, because she received a phone call from Mum or about Mum being ill at 11.15, and there weren't any phones from 11 till 12. Yes, and you said Helen Brent and, and uh, Benito. Yes, you? and I thought she must yes. have had an accomplice which might have been Benito because he must have, he, she left him at the table. Thank you. Anushka? I've got Miss Brent as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because I don't think the, the phones were cut off, so she couldn't have made the phone call to her mother. There's no such thing about her mother being ill. Thank she you. was crying because of the onions. She'd been in the kitchen and used the knife. She used the gloves so you couldn't get the fingerprints yes. on the knife. And Thank she was in one of the photographs. Thank you very much indeed. Patrick? Well, I believe she's far too lovely to have done it. I believe you're about the onions. I think you're crying because of the onions, and not, beca uh, not because of the onions, because of your mum. And uh, all the cigarette business, all that. And I think it was the commander. And his name was written on the block of ice, which he dropped to destroy the evidence. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Then stand by for blasting. Will the real who done it stand up, please? It's not. Oh, wow. Well, that's excellent. Yes, Anushka Hempel, uh, she got it dead on the button. Uh, she had very, very good clues. So did you, Julie. Congratulations. Well done. Right. 
Well, I must say that it's been a regular cobweb of espionage this week, so to clarify the details, here is how it was done, along with all the clues. Now, Helen Brent was crying when she rejoined Benita for dinner. This was due to her allergy to onions, which the murdered chef was chopping. Now, her alibi for the tears was the call from her mother, but this, of course, couldn't be true because the outside telephone lines were not working at the time. But if you remember, uh, she was allergic to onions, hence the tears. She also said that she didn't smoke, but as Brett saw her lighter and cigarettes fall out of her handbag, and as nobody else smoked cigarettes, the dog end in the kitchen must have been hers. She also appears in the two photographs shown by the MI5 man, but she was wearing a black wig at the time. At 11.30, she left Benito upstairs, slipped into the kitchen, locked Ravel in the freezer, and rejoined Benito in the dining room, still crying from the onions, of course. Well, she murdered Ravel because she refused to help her, her help me, because he refused to help her to poison the president's food. So, if there are any presidents watching, I should get somebody to check your dinner tonight before you start. <laughs> Next week, a man gets a phone call. Uh, someone at the other end asks him to go to the window, and he's promptly shot dead. And no wonder the telephone charges are going up. In the meantime, it's good night from our panel uh, and the hotel staff. And one last piece of advice uh, for the junior viewers if you go blubbing to Mum about something tonight, uh, she won't necessarily believe that you're hard work peeling onions. Good night. Mm -hmm.